Yeah. So quick backstory. So with COVID-19, um, both of our casinos are closed. So the only option is home games. Okay. So this hand is from a private one, two home game with a $500 cap, okay. but you can match the stack. And if you ask the table nicely to put more money, they'll let you, et cetera. So okay. it's a pretty casual environment, but, uh, there's a dealer, they're taking rake and there's a cocktail waitress, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this hand, well, okay. So the table is very deep. Most people have over a thousand dollars. Okay. And there's been a lot of interesting spots all night because of how deep it is. And people are opening to a reasonably small size compared to how deep the stacks are. So a typical open is 15. And okay. in this hand, I opened for 15 under the gun with pocket sixes. And we go seven ways to the flop or something like that. It just calls all around. And that's not happening every single hand in this game, but it just goes to show that there is some seriously loose play happening at times. Sure. Um, a lot of drinking involved, etc. cetera. Um, so the flop comes Jack, King, six, all spades. Do you have the six so of I've spades in your deck. hand? Oh, you don't? No, Sorry. I have Jack two red King sixes. Six. Sorry. Yeah. So it's Can't a monotone the... board. Got it, uh, got it. All spades. <laughs> Got it. All right. So yeah. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put six of clubs, six of hearts for your hand. So it comes out king jack six all spades. So you have bottom set, but you're up against like six other people, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and the small blind check, big mm-hmm. blind check, mm-hmm. and I decide to lead out for sixty. Sixty um, into one hundred and five. Yeah, about. And, okay. Um, by the way, so with the main villains, we're playing about 1,200 effective. Um, I have 1,200. They both cover me. Um, so I lead 60. Mm-hmm. And then the guy to my left jams his short stack for 280. So like plus one, now, all in for 280. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple folds. Mm-hmm. And then the button calls the 280 okay now the small blind fold and then the big blind he visibly contemplates the situation and then even goes out loud oh i don't know what to do etc before putting in the 280 himself okay so you raise it to 15 with six of clubs six of hearts from under the gun there's like six callers the board comes out king jack six all spades you flop bottom set checks to you you bet 60 this guy to your left was a little bit short, moves all in for 280. It falls to the button. He calls, and the big blind also calls, and I'm assuming that you call, right? Yeah, so I did call, but and I, to be honest, I was not loving it, and if I'm going to look at what kind of ranges I'm putting people on, more often than not, I felt like I would have one out. Now, the reason why I didn't throw it away is, well, first off, I said, how can I fold a set in a home game full of people drinking? And second off, there's that element where you see some weird things that shouldn't necessarily happen, but sure. do happen. And mm-hmm. there's been a few occasions of that all night. So I said, maybe some people have top pair. One of the or, or, three or has what about there. what about if somebody's fl- slow playing the uh, a couple of flushes or the nut flush or something? I mean, you're getting such a price here, right? Two eighty call, right. call. I mean, after your call, the pot's twelve twenty five. I just did the calculation, but it's probably like nine hundred, like two eighty for you to call, or yeah, something like, you know nine hundred and change. Two twenty, yeah, because I put sixty in. So all oh, right, yeah, how right. Can I so fold, yeah, right? you can't fold. Yeah. I, so but but what you're saying is you're concerned about somehow like someone having king jack. I, I think what's more interesting here is whether or not you bet on the flop here. And I would tend to say yes. And the reason why I think it's more interesting is because it's really hard to like plug in a bunch of pre-flop ranges. Like when you look at somebody like say V-pipping, like let's say all players V-pip the top 35% of their hands to a single raise. It's like, how do you define that 35%? Let's say that they favor suited hands. What's the chances? that someone has already flopped the flush here. But what I would look at this board though, is that this becomes almost a slam dunk bet for me because you've got a bunch of uh, of the high cards that are on the board that, that are also represented in people's ranges. Like if the board was, for example, 
six deuce three all spades. You know, uh, you could make probably more of a case where almost that becomes a check. I would still probably tend to bet for protection for the fact that people are going to call with high spades, but here you're going to get called more often because people like to play sort of like offsuit Broadway types of hands or something like that. But I would not, I, I think calling is clear cut. You don't want to get yourself into, you know, it seems like one of these guys could easily have flopped the flush here and is trapping. Well, that's what I was saying. I, I figured one guy probably has a small flush. And that's what I was thinking um, that either the short stack or the button had. And then I figured the big blind, he either has King Jack or he has the Ace of Spades. And one of them he's drawing, right? Just the way that he really thought about it. and was, Or he has a king with a, a queen of spades. I don't know. Something like that, right? All right. Um, so, so we've got this main pot. Now we're going to build a side pot. What's the turn? So the turn is a seven of spades. Oh, okay. So four spades now. Right. Okay. And the big blind checks. Mm -hmm. I check. And the button also checks. So big blind checks, uh, hero checks, and button also checks. Why do I feel, why do, why do I think I'm missing a player? In, no, because the other guy's all in. Okay. There's only three people. In, in, right, yeah. right, right. So big line checks, hero checks, button checks. And I think that's pretty standard, right? For you, <laughs> you don't want to put money in now on the turn. So it's good that he got right, checked no through. Kidding. Right. Good. It's good Especially that he got checked through. Right. Yeah. There's my yeah. stack in the pot already. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so the river comes a jack and pairs the board. Okay. So you fill up. And now the big blind leads out for $500, which in this game is a big bet. It's not a unheard of bet. There's probably one, you know, one or three points in the night where somebody's betting about $500 on the river, but you know, it's a sizable bet. So this gets and, into this is why I think this hand is pretty interesting and I understand what you're saying about big bet. So if he bets 500 and you've already put 280 in, or he's already put 280 in, after the 500, I would say he probably has about 700 left, right, in his stack. So he starts the, probably the river with about 1,200. I know this is all approximate, but what's really interesting here is, is that, you know, I know you still have to beat the guy that's all in, and I know this is just a side pot, but I can't see somebody getting away from the ace of spades here, unless you think that this is such a, this is where live poker comes into play because some people could make the argument that f this bet is just so ridiculously strong. And this is where a lot of people that don't understand live poker and sort of small stakes is that, yeah, 500 into 1225, right, is only 40% of the pot. Right. But, but the bet right. is not a 40% strength. The smaller no. the pot is, the more a full-size pot bet doesn't represent anything, meaning that, like, if somebody bets... 10 into 10. That's 100% of the pot, right? But when someone bets 500 into 1225, that's stronger than 10 into 10. Even though it's 40% of the pot, it's all about the absolute value of the bet, right? It's the absolute size of the bet. Now, when he only has 700 left, I think it's probably pretty close because when I looked at this in paper, I want to kind of jam here. I really kind of want to jam here because I don't think someone's going to fold the ace of spades but a lot of guys get shy on the river when the board pairs. And I don't know if this guy would bet 500 with the ace of spades. The other thing too is, is that if you jam and it's the other guy behind you that has the higher full house, then you're really fucked because you've got a couple things going on here. Like you just call the guy jams behind you. You could easily, and especially if this guy calls from up front, you easily make a case for getting away from it. You save your last 700. The other thing, too, that you don't want to do is drive the ace of spades out of the hand behind you. So it's all because there's a guy behind you here. You don't, I feel like the more I think about this, maybe it's just a flat, even though at first on paper, I was like, oh, I would just jam this all day. But with that third player in the hand, I think, and, and at this level, I think I probably just flat. Yeah, and another quick note is the two guys that are left in the hand with money to play mm -hmm. are the least bad at the table. So I'm not going to say they're great, you know, by by any means, but they're they were doing the least amount of weird things. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking myself, 
if he has the ace of spades or if he has a boat, right? And I ended up leaning towards thinking that I think I'm good here. You know, I'm obviously not going to lay this down, but I don't think there's a ton of value in jamming because, yeah, I'm still worried about the other guy. And maybe if I call and then the other guy jams and then the other guy calls or goes all in over the top because they're playing very deep, they probably right. have an extra 800 to play for. Then I guess I can just muck my hand, even though it's so well, ridiculous. Well, that's what. It, well, no, yeah. I think that you can muck if you call and then it goes raise call for sure. I mean, that's why that's part of the reason why I don't want to jam here. Some people in the live chat are even saying fold now. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, you're gonna fold a full house the way that this hand is played out in a game where a fifteen dollar open from under the gun just got six callers. I mean, let, let, right. think about that, guys. I mean, <laughs> right. I think yeah, the play yeah, is to. Yeah. I think the play is to call. Did you call? Yeah, I ended up calling and uh-huh. losing. Um, so what happened? I lost. So what happened? So I called. Yep. And then the button uh, folded king nine of spades. Uh, sorry, queen nine of spades face up. So he'd flop the flush. Right. So the button was slow playing a flush. He, yeah. he he got a bad turn card and checked it through, and now he recognizes that he can't call with the second nut flush, obviously, on a paired board, right, when it goes 500 call. With four spades on the board. Right, So his right. hand is effectively right. useless at this point, right? Right, right, right. So, so he, he mucks that face up. Yep. The uh, plus one, he ended up having ace jack with the ace of spades, so that's what he had jammed. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the big blind had a uh, king jack offsuit or some shit ah. like that for jack four kings. Wow! So yeah. the guys got king jack, huh? The good old yeah. king jack. Well, I mean, I don't think that you really played it p- badly on any street, to be honest with you. I mean, my main question with the call is, can I ever fold the flop? Because uh, that was the point on the river. I didn't think too long at all. You know, I said, mm-hmm. okay, could easily have the ace of spades. If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. I have a very, now, very, I have a very hard time folding a flop like this, and the reason is, is because because of the pre-flop action, there are not going to be oversets that are represented here. I'm assuming that people are always going to three bet off with kings and jacks. Now, I understand there's a possibility of king jack, but where you would fold the flop on a monotone board with bottom set is if you could easily be overset. Um, right. like, you know, if the board had come out like six, nine, 10 and people flatted with tens and nine, you know what I'm saying? Or six, eight, 10 people flat with tens and eights and stuff. But yeah, I, kind I, of I wouldn't thought fold. the same thing. I, I, I wouldn't fold I the flop. I thought maybe someone could be in there with jacks, but even then Kings is impossible. Yeah, I mean, me, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But, uh, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.